one of the war's most carefully guarded secrets has been revealed. This is radar, an electronic eye penetrating darkness, cloud, and thickest fog to aim our guns and bombs, to bring our aircraft safely home, to warn against attack, against storms, against navigation hazards. With urgent war demands accelerating 20 years' research in electronics, radar's potential forced swift advance in Air Force operational techniques, multiplied our striking power, and held the enemy off until he could no longer strike back. This is how radar works. A transmitter sends out a constant stream of ultra-shortwave impulses, which probe the sky like giant searchlight beams at a speed of 186,000 miles per second. This oscilloscope registers the impulses and indicates the position of the transmitter by this large peak. When the radar beam strikes a solid object, such as a plane, it echoes back and appears on the oscilloscope screen as a smaller peak. By measuring the elapsed time and by focusing the radar beam like a giant searchlight, the plane's direction and distance are easily calculated. To carry out a war strategy rooted in the laboratories and the factories, an amazing variety of highly specialized radars has been developed. This is the early warning system, first guard against enemy attack, the radar that cost the Luftwaffe the Battle of Britain. Blanketing the sky in every direction, the early warning system is designed to detect an approaching bogey a hundred miles away, to determine its azimuth and speed, to alert searchlights, gun crews, and night fighters. As the bogey draws nearer, this radar system, designed to throw a more sharply focused beam, takes over. Its job, to secure altitude and range data. This information is immediately forwarded to the plotting center. Here, location, course, speed, and altitude of the approaching aircraft are computed long before it comes within striking distance of the target installation. Continuous tracking from the moment a bogey is spotted provides a steady flow of firing data to gun crews and searchlight batteries who remain in constant communication with radar headquarters. As the plane enters gun range, anti-aircraft crews switch on their electronically guided searchlights. Radar is so sensitive, so precise, that once a searchlight beam focuses on an aircraft, escape becomes almost impossible. With AA guns automatically aimed by fire control radar, visibility is no longer of prime importance. But searchlights are triangulated on target to double check range calculations. Final reports funnel into the plotting center, and the action signal goes out to the guns, already waiting to shoot down the intruder. To make certain that Allied guns would not mistakenly shoot our own planes from war-crowded skies, the Air Force has turned to another radar device, the IFF, named for its ability to identify friend or foe. This device automatically establishes identification by an exchange of signals between ground radar and the aircraft in flight. When an unidentified plane is detected, an interrogator responder sends out a questioning signal. A transmitting device carried aboard all friendly aircraft is automatically set off by this signal and responds with an extremely powerful energy wave which causes a deviation in the normal oscilloscope patterns. If the plane is unfriendly, the normal echo pattern remains unchanged. Quick to exploit its ability to identify the enemy at all times, the AAF evolved new radar-based combat techniques designed special aircraft for night fighting. This air defense method is called GCI, for ground control interception and employs the same type of radar as that used to monitor D-Day air traffic over France. The dial records relative positions of friend and enemy, makes it a simple matter to vector our planes in for the kill.
unlimited in its application, radar has saved the lives of countless airmen. Throwing this emergency switch prior to ditching a battle-damaged bomber causes a continued wide impulse to be transmitted, enabling ground stations to locate the falling plane by triangulation. The device is destroyed automatically, but before the bomber hits the water, an air-sea rescue plane is on its way to the ditching site. Maintenance of air transport schedules, vital in far-flung military operations, depends heavily on radar. Uninterrupted delivery of urgently needed materiel often forces disregard of weather hazards. When pilots low on fuel find runways closed in by fog, or when quick-shifting weather blots out a tiny Pacific landfall, endangered planes are helped to safety by a ground control approach radar system known as GCA. No part of this system is carried aboard the plane but the pilot receives direct verbal guidance from the ground-based radar man. These dials show the transport's position relative to the runway. The operator's first task is to direct the pilot into correct position for a landing approach. As the transport nears the runway, it is picked up and registered on the GCA's oscilloscope. The GCA antenna has only one range and one azimuth, and if the approaching plane is correctly vectored, it will appear as a luminous patch moving between parallel lines. The operator notifies the pilot when the plane is over the glide path, and the transport settles down, literally talked onto the runway for a safe and easy blind landing. Despite its military usefulness, radar's peacetime possibilities have yet to be fully explored. But at war's end, giant cargo planes operating halfway across the world point to an indisputable fact. In peace, as well as war, the development of radar is now inseparable from the development of aviation.